Hey guys, how you doing? Welcome back to the Art House. I got a really interesting topic I wanted to discuss today about the beta print run. So I ran a poll on the Sorcery Contested Realm community group to get some data from the community on what they think is the right print run number for the beta set that'll be upcoming after the alpha fulfillment. Um, so I'm here at the Sorcery Contested Realm Facebook group, community Facebook group, and we just hit a really great milestone of 1,700 members. Really excited about that. The group was established in early 2022-ish, I want to say. Um, so it's really great growth as we're leading into the release here, trying to make that push to 2000. So please join the group, spread the word. Um, we're active every single day in there. I've posted every single day since the group was established. And there's a lot of people chiming in as we ramp up to release more talk about gameplay, about the cards, um, certainly about the art. I share a lot of information about that. And <clears throat> one of the, um, Great and fun things is that almost all of the sorcery alpha artists are in the group. You see here we have Ed Beard Jr. who did not do alpha, but he'll be doing the mini set um, centered around the Dragon dragon Lord uh, Lauren theme. Elvira Shakarova, Gadu Duasso, Tony Sublo, Kyle Calzans, Marta Molina, Brian Smith, Lindsey Krumat, Matthias Frisk, Severin Pignot, <coughs> Francesca Baral, Jeff Mangas, Vincent Pompetti. So many, many artists. Um, so they're active, they're chiming in, they join on some of my live streams sometimes, which is awesome and a lot of fun and I appreciate that. So getting down into the details, um, I also wanted to point you to a live event that I did yesterday with uh, Crazy Dave Sheedy. Crazy Dave, ESPI. So it was about an hour long discussion. He is a LGS owner or a partner in an LGS up in Albany, New York called Flights, Flights to Gaming Store, I think is what it is. And uh, he mentioned he's doing a he's planning a release event for July 22nd up at his store flights Two. you can Google that or you can go look at the video I included the link to his store and he's going to do a release premiere type event at his store. He's trying to get a couple artists out there. Uh, sounds like maybe Jeff Menges will be coming and he's trying to get Marta Molina to fly in from Spain, which would be amazing. <clears throat> great artist. Um, be a great opportunity to get signatures from both of those artists and maybe some of their products get card signed. Uh, Dave has some has a custom play mat or a custom art he commissioned from Marta, and he's going to get. Um, I think he still has a bunch of those, and if Marta comes out, you could get those signed and purchase one. All right, so let's get into the poll. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right, so scrolling down here. I ran this poll and it says there's been live a discussion this weekend in the Collector Art House Discord. And a reminder, if you go to the Linktree link in all these videos, you could find all of my social media platforms. One of those is Collector Art House on Discord, where we're pretty active daily talking about the game, all different topics. And we had this discussion about the print run size for beta. What would be the optimal print run size um, to kind of balance and serve all markets, talking about collector, speculator, investor, and player markets, right? Because all segments are important to a sustainable TCG. They all kind of play in in the modern uh, modern culture of TCGs, right? So for reference, alpha is about 30,000 boxes. So the question is, what is the right print run size for beta in your opinion? And I allowed people to comment in the thread if they'd like to explain. And then as I got results, I asked them to follow up based on different parameters. So maybe I'll touch on that, but very interesting results. Uh, you see 2% said it should be less than 30,000. So less than the alpha print run. 33% said 30 to 40,000. 11%, 40 to 50K, and 54% larger than 50,000, which I thought was pretty interesting. All right, so we have, again, 1,700 people in the group, uh, 115 people voted, so a decent sample size. And if I click that button, we can see the raw numbers of who voted for what. So the leading votes was 63 of the 115 votes voted for greater than 50,000. We only had 12 for 40 to 50, three for less than 30. So I guess, um, you know, that might be the, the speculator investor types that want the uh, beta print run to be valuable um, would be my guess. And then you had 37 in that 30 to 40K range. So basically take the 30K from Alpha as the benchmark, do maybe upwards of five to 10,000 more than that. Um, and then you had like a, a fairly large contingent, 63, more than 50%, said do over 50,000, which would be a, a substantive uh, step size from the alpha print run. 
And I would guess that those are probably the gamers that uh, think it's very important to make sure that that product is cheap and affordable inexpensive to reach that next leg of the market for growth and so players can get in at an attractive price point an affordable price point which i would agree is important i would say that um you know alpha kickstarter is kind of like the splash debut this is the new game it's getting awareness out to the markets and now there's been about 18 months that has transpired since the kickstarter campaign or coming up on that by the time we get the product and a lot of people have just found out about the game in that time frame. And a lot of people have yet to find out about the game. So I think the intent of beta is to satisfy the folks who either missed the Kickstarter, you know, found out about the game after the Kickstarter closed, and or people who bought into the Kickstarter but, you know, regret not buying enough and want to get more product and really start collecting and playing and having enough cards for a full playset to, you know, try different deck archetypes and get into the game. So... <clears throat> Pretty interesting there. Um, I created this other graphic after the results to kind of um, extract my view. Let's see if this blows up a little better. Uh, might actually be better on the website view. All right, so I kind of segmented this into the different categories, less than 30K, 30 to 40, 40 to 50, and greater than 50. And I created a spectrum, right? So if it's less than 30, I'm assuming those are the investor speculator types. They want a very low print run. They want supply to be less than demand which forces pricing higher you have more people trying to buy the product and willing to buy a premium for the product um, when you have a supply and demand imbalance like that but as you get towards 50k and greater um, you're going to appeal more to the collectors i said was kind of like in this middle spectrum you know they want that balance they want their product to be valuable they also want it to be fairly affordable reasonably affordable so they can collect a master set um, a lot of collectors like to have a complete master set of every single card in the set which is 400 ish cards and then there's it's really 800 because you have 400 non-foil and then all the cards also come in foil so it's a lot of cards to acquire it can get pretty expensive you know if, if the cards are really valuable so the sweet spot there might be 30 to 50 so you have reasonable booster box prices and um, typically correlated to booster box prices to some extent are the singles in the box right um, and then greater than 50k would be your player segment, maybe the player purist that just wants these as game pieces. They really don't care to collect outside of having every card in the set or a, or a um, play set of the cards um, so they can make whatever deck they want. So um, just a reminder on the rules, you have four rarity levels, you have ordinary, you get a, which is the most common, you get a four copies of ordinary cards, three copies of exceptional cards in your deck, two copies of elite cards, and one copy of each unique card. So <clears throat> a master set isn't, um, you know, it's kind of scaled by those rarity parameters, um, which makes it a little more attainable, but given the pull rates, you'd have to open a ton of boxes to actually pull a master set. So people will have to practically uh, buy, sell, and trade to reach their collection goals. All right, so that's kind of the takeaway, guys. Pretty interesting. Um, I'd be curious if you want to comment in the notes here. I know a lot of people are not on Facebook, so if you could please comment in the YouTube feed. Let me know if you think the, the beta print run size should be less than 30, between 30 to 40, 40 to 50, or greater to 50, and what is your rationale for that? Let me know if you're an investor collector, collector, player, or some hybrid, and that's what is going to influence your number, I would guess. So I'd love to hear your rationale. Where do you think, um, you know, what is the most healthy print size for beta and why, based on your perspective of where you fall on the spectrum as an investor, speculator, collector, or player. Hey, thanks guys for tuning in and uh, we'll see you soon in the next one. Please like, share, subscribe, and uh, follow the channel. Appreciate it. Thanks.